The Gift of the Magpie Once upon a time, in a little patch of woods between a condo and a pawn shop, there lived a pair of magpies. If you don't know, magpies are sleek birds with black faces and white bellies. They're always chattering and chittering, fluttering through the dense and towering trees that make their home. Some people consider them bad luck, but magpies are a friendly sort of bird. Their only bad habit is stealing little bits and bobs to make their nests, but even that is usually more trash than treasure. The two magpies we're talking about today are named Della and Jimbo. They were the only two birds living in their little patch of woods, and they had been best friends since they were hardly more than eggs. They didn't have much, living between the condo and the pawn shop as they did, but they had enough. More than enough, really, because they both had their treasures. Jimbo's treasure was an old golden watch face. He had found it behind the pawn shop one day, and he had scooped it up before the old human could notice he'd dropped it. Of course, being a bird, Jimbo couldn't tell time, but every night he would pull out the watch and watch the hands tick around and the moon glint off the gold. Della's treasure was smaller and much more personal. She had been born with red feathers on either side of her beak, like she was blushing. They were very uncommon among magpies, and Della was absurdly proud of them. She'd start each morning by smoothing them down with her wings, singing happily to herself. In fact, that's how she started Christmas Eve, a day that would change them both forever. Hum la dum da dum, she said, then waved as Jimbo came fluttering over. Hey, pal, what's your plan for today? I'm a little chilly today. I think I'll stay around here and look for some more bedding for my nest, Jimbo said. What about you? Mm, I thought I'd go look for some grubs in the grass, Della said. Maybe I'll look for the last of the berries before they all freeze up. Sounds good. Let's meet up tomorrow for Christmas breakfast. What do you say? Definitely, Della agreed. They didn't have much, so they didn't get each other gifts, but they always made sure to spend at least part of Christmas together, enjoying each other's company. They sat and chatted for a while longer and then went their separate ways. Della went to Grub for Grubs and was having a lot of success. She'd just eaten a particularly big and wriggly sucker when she heard a passing call. All here, you critters, you flitters, you rubes. All here, you digglers, you wigglers, you boobs. I've got the finest, the rarest, and trust. If you don't visit me, then Christmas is bust. Curious, Della flapped through the trees until she found the source of the voice. It was a raccoon carrying a heavy, lumpy, bumpy bag. He repeated the call again and again until the magpie fluttered down to land in front of him. Ah, oh, hey, friend, said Della. What you got there? Only the best of the best, said the raccoon. My name is Saffron, and I've got what you need to make this Christmas a merry one. Oh, said Della. What do you have? Saffron smiled and began to rummage in his pack. I've got rings, necklaces, some shiny cans, a few old books, a gold band for a watch, a Game Boy. Wait, said Della. Can I see the watch band? She was thinking, of course, of Jimbo's shining golden watch face. Didn't he spend every morning and many evenings watching the little watch tick? Wouldn't this lovely band let him wear it so he could carry it all over? He would love that. Saffron pulled out the band with a flourish. The finest watch-wearing utensil this side of the Mississippi. The raccoon wasn't lying. The band was glinting gold and seemed to shine in the sun. Oh, I'll take it, said Della. My best friend will go crazy for it. He could wear his watch as a belt while he flies. Hmm, what do you have to trade? asked the raccoon. Um, I have some grubs, and, well, that's it, really. Uh, we don't have much here. 
Just bugs and sticks and trees. That's too bad, said Saffron, shaking his head. This is a store, not a charity. I need something in exchange. Don't you have anything valuable? Well, said Della, everyone always says I have the finest red feathers. The raccoon leaned in close, admiring the magpie's blushing cheeks. Mm, those are rather pretty, and definitely not something I've seen before. I suppose I could trade the watch band if you'd give me all those feathers. What? said Della, her wings touching her cheeks protectively. They're totally unique, and they're my one treasure in the whole world, so I can't trade those. Well, that's too bad, said the raccoon, pulling the band away from the magpie. I don't do charity, and apparently you don't even like your friend that much. What are you talking about, said Della. He's my best friend. I would do anything for him. Well, anything except trade those feathers, said Saffron. Seems to me that if you really like someone, you'll do whatever it takes to get them the best present possible for the holidays. But I do really like him. Hey, actions speak louder than words, said Saffron, packing his bag back up. Have a good Christmas, if you can call it a Christmas without any presents. He hefted his back and turned away. Wait, Della called out. The raccoon's words had her feeling like a bad friend, which, to be fair, was exactly the raccoon's plan. He lived to make trades and collect stuff, and he wasn't above using guilt to get his way. I'll, I'll take the watch band. Good decision, said Saffron. I see we've got a smart bird on our hands. With her talons and wings and some help from the raccoon, Della soon plucked out her red cheek feathers. She was left with a bald spot on either side of her beak that got goosebumps in the cold winter air. Simply beautiful, said Saffron, sealing the feathers in a little leather pouch. And here is the watch band. Have a happy holiday. You too, said Della. The raccoon nodded and trundled away into the woods, leaving her bare-cheeked and holding the watch band. Well, it cost my feathers, but I'm a good friend. Just think of how happy Jimbo is going to be when I show him he can finally wear that old watch. The next morning, she woke up early and got ready for Jimbo to visit. She hung fresh pine boughs all over the tree and swept out the nest. She even found a bit of old newspaper and had wrapped Jimbo's present in it. Hello, hello, said Jimbo when he finally arrived. Merry Christmas. And then he took one look at his friend and his face fell. He looked stricken, like he was about to be sick, like someone had plucked his wings. Della, he said, aghast. What have you done to your cheek feathers? They were your favorite. What did you do? What have you done? Della felt herself blush, for real this time, and then get a little angry. So my red feathers are gone, she said. What, do you like me less without them? Why do you look so upset? Jimbo sighed and pulled out a little bundle from his feathers. It was wrapped in leaves and tied with a bright purple bow he had found blowing in a dumpster. What, what's this? Della said. It's why I looked so upset, Jimbo said. I still think you're incredible, and I don't care what you do with your feathers. It's just, well, open it, and you'll see why I looked a little sad. Curious, Della took the ribbon in her beak and pulled. The leaves fell open, and inside, gleaming white among the foliage, was a comb. Not just any comb, but a beautiful comb made of pearl. Maybe it was for a rich doll or a small child, but it was tiny enough for a bird and glittered magically in the sun. Jimbo, it's amazing, she said. I'm glad you like it, he said. 
But you can't really use it to comb your cheek feathers when you don't have them anymore. Oh, they'll grow back eventually, she said. I sold them to get you something for Christmas. Don't complain, she said when Jimbo started to protest. Just open your present. With another sigh, but also a dawning smile, Jimbo took the newspaper-wrapped present. You're going to love it, said Della. I just know it. The magpie pulled open the paper, and when he saw the beautiful golden watch band sitting there, he started to laugh. He laughed and laughed, his head thrown back and tears in his eyes. Jimbo, Della said. What's so funny? Don't you like it? Jimbo rubbed his eyes and wrapped Della in a great big hug. <laughs> it's beautiful, he said. It's perfect. Well, then why are you laughing? she asked. Della, I got your comb from a raccoon salesman and I had to trade him my watch. She blinked at him and then she started laughing too. It was too much. She'd traded her feathers to get him a band for the watch and he'd traded his watch to get her a comb for her feathers. How did we do something so silly? he asked. Oh, that salesman, said Della. He made me feel like I would be a bad friend if I didn't spend a lot on you. I felt like I had to get you something big or else Christmas would be ruined. He did the same thing to me, said Jimbo. But really, all I wanted for Christmas was to spend time with you. Same here, said Della, smiling a slow smile. I wanted to make this holiday great And give you the perfect gift I trade every feather, brave all kinds of weather To grant you your Christmas wish But I know that for me, what I want, honestly Can never be sold or bought I love spending the day in a Christmassy way with you, cause I love you a lot. My wish this year is the same old wish that I've wished all the years before. I don't need any presents, my gift is your presence, it's you by my side once more. My watch was my treasure, I took such great pleasure in watching its tiny hands twirl. But when I needed to pick my watch or your gift, it was easy to choose combs of pearl. Watches tick all the day, pass the seconds away, but who knows if that time was well spent. For me, you're the one that makes days the most fun. You're my treasure, my very best friend. Christmas I have just one wish and the wish isn't even new it's to spend every moment just hanging at home with my favorite person it's you you are my wish this Christmas and you've been my wish before I don't need any presents my gift is your presence, it's you, by my side once more. Well, I guess everything is okay then, said Jimbo. Still, maybe that raccoon is still in the area. Christmas scavenger hunt, Della yelled. And so they chased after the raccoon salesman. But they never did catch him. That was okay, though. They had a great day spending time with each other and more. 
they learned that their friendship was better than anything they could own. And that, truly, was the greatest gift of all. The End Thanks for listening!